How's it going guys? I'm Julian Bradley and today I'm going to talk about two-handed chord voicings. I'm going to explain the thinking behind how I choose my two-handed chord voicings. After all, there are always multiple chord voicings that you could use. So in this video I'm going to explain my thinking behind how I choose which chord voicing to use. And I'm going to show you how as a solo piano player I am able to play bass line, chord voicing and melody notes at the same time. So as a jazz piano player there are two types of chord voicing you can use. There are one-handed chord voicings which are good for your left hand while your right hand's playing a melody. And then you have two-handed chord voicings which allow you to create a bigger sound, a more sophisticated sound. So when I'm deciding which chord voicing to use, I'm looking at two things. I'm looking at what the chord symbol is in the chord sheet, so it might be C minor 7, F dominant 7, B flat major 7, and then I'm also looking at the melody note. Now once I've seen what the melody note is, I'm going to look through my memory bank of chord voicings so all the voicings which I've memorized, and I'm looking for a chord voicing which just happens to have the melody note as the top note in the chord voicing. So say for example, there's a C minor seven chord in the chord sheet, and the melody is a D, the ninth. My first step is to look through my memory bank of chord voicings. I'm gonna look for a C minor seven voicing which has the ninth at the top. And I would probably use this one. It's quite a stretch in the left hand. But I can make it, so that's one of my favourite voicings. And it's perfect for this situation. Because it allows me to play the chord and the melody note. And the melody note's not just some extra note that I'm adding on top of an unrelated voicing, it's actually part of the voicing. It's part of a well-balanced voicing which I know sounds good on its own. Let's say that I had a C major 7 chord in the chord sheet and the melody note was a C. Well, I'd scan through my memory bank of chord voicings for C major 7 and I'd look for a chord voicing which just happens to have C as its top note, so the root as its top note. I'd probably play this voicing. So it's a nice well-balanced chord voicing and it just happens to have the melody note as its top note. So, so far, using this technique, we're able to play the chord voicing and the melody at the same time. But how about the bass line? Because we also want to play the bass line. Now, most bass lines just play the root of each chord. Now, some of these voicings already have the root of the chord as their lowest note, which means for these voicings I'm fine just playing the voicing, and in those cases I'm playing the melody note, the voicing, and the bass note, and I'm playing them all just with a carefully chosen chord voicing, which just happens to have the melody note as its top note, and the chord's root note as its bottom note. However, some of these chord voicings don't have the root as their bottom note. This voicing for C major 7, for example, 
does not have C as its lowest note. So, how do I play the bass note? I want a C in my bass line. And the chord voicing. Well, I do pretty much what I just did. I hold down the root of the chord with the pedal, and then I jump up and play the rest of the voicing, as well as the melody notes. So let's take a look at the Taxi Driver theme composed by Bernard Herrmann. So here I was just playing it with the left hand voicing and the melody in the right, but if I want to play it with some two handed voicings, I'll basically just look at what the chord symbol is and then what the melody note is and I'll try to find a chord voicing which just happens to have the melody note as its top note. So first up, we have a G minor 7 chord, and the melody note is an A, so the ninth. So on a G minor 7 voicing that has the ninth as its top note, I'll usually go with this one. The next chord we have a C dominant 7, the melody note is A, the 6th or the 13th, I'll probably play this. Next chord we have is an F major 7, the melody note is a G, I'll probably go with this, a stack of fourths up from the major 7th of F. D minor 7 chord, melody note is a G, I'll probably play this, just a standard D minor 11 chord. We go back to G minor 7, melody note is a C now, the 11th, so I'll use my minor 7 voicing that has the 11th as its top note. A C dominant 7 chord, top note is a sharp 9, E flat, or D sharp. I'll find a voicing, this is what I'll use, which has sharp 9 as its top note. And for that final chord, the voicing I wanted to use didn't have the root note as its lowest note, so what I did hold down the root with the pedal, come up and play the rootless voicing. So that's the thought process behind how I choose which chord voicing to use, because there's always almost infinite possibilities with which voicing you're going to use, but this makes a lot of sense because it allows you to play the melody note, the chord voicing and the bass note. <laughs>